Hey, it's the Talk Tall Boy Experience. You're hanging out with your man, Tall Boy. And uh, you know what? I came down here to the M Bar down here in Atlanta, and I hooked up with a with the the big homie, <laughs> Emilio Rojas. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? Thanks. I'm doing all right. Uh, you know, today you're dropping the mixtape, uh, Breaking Point. Uh, talk about it. Uh, we dropped the tape two weeks ago. Um, we're in Atlanta today, actually. We're promoting the single off the the tape called "I Got It," produced by Young Shunt. Um, so we had a little meet and greet with uh, with, you know, with some of the DJs from out here who are on radio, college radio, killing it in the clubs, you know. So we wanted to get them familiar with me and with the single. So Green brought us out. So yeah. Um, well, you you all over the place. So um, I got a couple of questions for you in regards to uh, you said DJs is the meet and greet. Give me your top five DJs. Top five DJs of all time. That you like to work with. That I like to work with. I mean, Green, of course, at the top of the list, cause. Green is my, my, you know, that's my man, so, Green, um, I like, uh, my homie DJ E's from Rochester, you know, just one of the homies for a long time, um, who else, what are the DJs, DJ Schoolboy from New York, of course, all the heavy hitters, you know, in New York, Ben, Enough, Camillo, it's just so many, you know, there's so many DJs, that if I, if I started to name all of them, then I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get, we get in trouble because I'm not going to remember you listen everybody. Right yeah, so so many ill DJs and everybody knows who they are, you know. Um, what's your relationship uh, with Green Lantern? Uh, you keep saying, you know, Green Lantern brought you out. You said, you know, that's your, your number one DJ. What's your relationship with him and how long have you known him? Uh, me and Green just work together, you know. Like, he's been kind of a mentor. Um, he's been really helpful with everything that we've done uh, in music. So, you know, we met uh, maybe three years ago. We've been working together for three years. Um, he heard a record, he, we're actually from the same city, we're both from Rochester, so he heard a record that I had done about our city, and then he reached out through Legend from OnSmash.com. So big shouts to Legend for, for linking us up. Um, and ever since then, you know, we had a good working chemistry. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Green's, because Green is a legend, you know. So it's, it's a blessing to be able to work with somebody who's been around, everybody from M to J to Nas, and the fact that he's working with me, you know, it's, it's humbling, but... It also says something about, you know, my ability and, you know, how much he believes in what we do if if those are the other people that he's, you know, affiliated with. That's, cool. That's what's happening. Um, talk a little bit about the, your song, Middle Finger to the Law. Oh, I just, I mean, I don't really like the police, so. So it doesn't get more simple than that. Like, it's pretty self-explanatory. I was in Australia when we made the record. Um, we were on tour with Wu-Tang in Australia. I was with a producer who's an Australian cat by the name of M. Phases. Um, we heard the record. What's the record uh, where the J samples from? Get the dirt off your shoulder? Yeah. I think it is, yeah. And I was like, yo, you should sample that. You got the acapella for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, yeah. And he's all like, you know, he's Australian. So he's like, yeah, mate, yeah. And, you know, we went back to uh, the hotel or whatever and we locked in with his laptop and like a Shure SM58 mic and demoed the record there. And I went back to New York a couple weeks later and fine-tuned it. That's how that record came about. That's what's happening. Um, how many mixtapes have you dropped so far? This will be my fourth. Fourth tape. My third with, you know, maybe third with Green. Yeah, my third with Green. Okay, so with that being said, um, what have you learned since the first mixtape to now this mixtape? I mean, mixtapes, I feel like doing mixtapes is about experimenting, you know, like it's free music for people to download via the net. And it gives me a chance as an artist to play with a bunch of different sounds and, you know, just kind of do whatever it is that I want to do and see what people react to and what people like and what people don't. So, you know, that's that's kind of, there's no pressure. Okay. So, um, if there was one thing that you wanted to improve, what would it be? I mean, there's a million things I want to improve. I'll just never say them because I can't, I can't let people know anything that I'm not feeling 100% on. Because as soon as people see, like, anything that they might consider a weakness, they they hone in on it. You know, like, you saw the Marquez and Cotto fight, and Marquez had that thing with his eye, right? And Cotto just kept tapping him, tapping him, tapping him. Even though Cotto is best with the body shots, he still was going at the eye because people like to isolate and attack weaknesses, you know? So that's why we don't publicize those. I heard that. Check that out. Um, so where can they uh, find the mixtape? You can download the Breaking Point mixtape at datpiff.com. Emilio Rojas Music.com is E M I L I O R O J A S Music.com. BBC Ice Cream.com, and you could just Google it. Like, we did a ton of downloads, it's everywhere. So, 
You shot a video overseas, and uh, uh, I see you like uh, the international travel. Uh, what's your favorite international spot? I love Paris, man. That's actually where we shot that video. Um, Paris. I like Venezuela a lot. I mean, I was blessed enough to go to Caracas and like meet a lot of my family down there. Um, but I'm Paris, man. Paris is. Oui, oui. Oh, wee. So, oh yeah, oui, oui, wee, exactly. <laughs> the food is so good, man. The women are like beautiful. They're like fashiony. So even like the the girls that ain't too pretty look pretty because the clothes make them look pretty, you know. So everything's a win. All right, well, I'm going to get you out on this one right here. I do a community initiative here in the Atlanta area about the importance of hustling the legal way and also networking. Can I get your personal definition of uh, hustle and network? I mean, hustle is just work hard. And, and if you work hard doing something you love, it won't feel like a hustle, you know? So I just think people should just find something that they enjoy and just strive to be the best at it. And that's it. And the network? Networking is just about being a real human being to other people. You know, it's not about like putting numbers in your phone book. It's about meeting people and having a human interaction, you know? And like, I think people respond more when, when people treat each other like human beings as opposed to something that they could use as a platform for that next level of success, you know? So if you treat somebody like, like a real person, you're going to go a lot further than treating somebody like they're just there to do something for you. That's what's happening. It's the Tall Boy Experience. You're hanging out with Emilio Rojas. Uh, he's doing his thing. Breaking Point Mixtape. Check it out.